Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to TechGeek webinar series, our endeavor to impart techies. We believe that sharing of knowledge is the key to enhance our skills and grow us as professionals. With this principle in mind, we have initiated a series of webinars conducted by industry experts to give you all a crisp insight of various domains. The topic of today's session is Client Value Creation Enabled by Business Analysis. Our guest speakers today are Subramanyam Natala, Managing Director, Technology Industry energy industry and Chanchal Mukherjee, Vice President Accenture. Subramanyam is Managing Director with Accenture, a senior IT management professional and strategy leader specializing in providing innovative technology solutions and consulting services to Fortune 500 Pet petroleum oil and gas MNCs, ensuring excellence in delivery and enabling cost optimization. He has over 17 years of progressive experience in the IT and energy sectors with skills in leveraging industry trends and insights to create revenue opportunities and generate appreciable value for all stakeholders. Subhu has expertise in analyzing productively with customers, mentoring large teams and enab enabling functional competencies among personnel. Our co-speaker is Chanchal Mukherjee. Chanchal is a Vice President and Lead for Business Analysis Practice for Communications, Media and Technology Industry at Delivery Centers for Technology in India. He joined Accenture in 2009 and brings with him 13 years of experience in global sales, account management, business development, business and technology consulting. He specializes in sales and account management in IT and consulting in CMT industry and has led multiple client critical engagements in Accenture. Prior to joining Accenture, he was Global Account Director with Cable and Wireless, which is now Vodafone. So without further delay, I introduce you all to our guest speakers. Over to you, Subramanyam. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, let me start by thanking you all for taking the time to attend this session. Um, we would love to keep it a very um, productive one. So in an endeavor to uh, take that, uh, take, take, make this session a very um, productive session, we have organized it into three parts. The first part of the session would be to um, give you a brief overview of the changing IT scenarios, changing business scenarios, and how IT departments and service, the IT service teams need to organize themselves uh, for this particular change. And, as one of the famous uh, authors, Spencer Johnson said, we need to anticipate the change, adapt, and enjoy the change. I think uh, in that journey is where um, I see a lot of value that we can derive uh, as customers and as uh, uh, IT professionals who can deliver uh, value to our client. The second item on our agenda would be a quick case study. So one is we provide you with some of the uh, high level overview, but then we wanted to discuss in detail as to how is it relevant on the, in a day to day example and I will take an example of um, uh, the, the benefits that you uh, we have realized, we have helped realize for one of our clients in oil and gas. And the third uh, um, part of it would be Chanchal talking about um, in a similar manner as to what I do, um, a quick view of what are all the challenges specific to the media and the, um, communications media and high technology and then move over to uh, discuss some of his experiences in this space. So with that um, I will go on to uh, slide number one which is uh, um, the perfect storm. Um, what this slide uh, presents um, in a way is as you see, a, um, a lot of business uh, transformation is happening as of today. Um, when I say business transformation, the uh, capital, uh, the economic um, models do change. And uh, there is a lot of capital and regulation um, along the um, overall financial uh, elements. Then there is a clear need for uh, globalization. So the, uh, as uh, Thomas Friedman famously said, world is flat, so now uh, we are looking at very similar chains across the world. So very recently I was in uh, Bangalore, from Bangalore to uh, Houston 
and I felt like it, there are a lot of the same same set of chains, the same uh, business models that are being applied across the globe. So the difference between how uh, it operates from one region to another region is uh, diminishing and this leads to a lot of uh, commoditization of all of the services. And while we do that, a lot of focus is also paid on environment, sustainability um, and uh, how how do we monitor our uh, overall green performance and all of these aspects are embedded within every business so now every business is trying to try and uh, cater to all these different challenges and the uh, the technology solution to that is what you see on the right hand side of the slide is we are now moving into a lot of um, cloud based solutions which are um, software as a service, um, a lot of mobility and a lot of solutions that are empowered by the crowd and through social, um, so, social platforms. So that is uh, one part of the technology and the second part of the technology is more about uh, mobility, how do we, um, how machines are becoming smart, what is the machine to machine communication and how can businesses harness this technology is the last element what you see is uh, in the bottom half of the entire thing. So we now have a business challenge, we, we have a range of technology solutions or a technology innovations that, uh, that are happening in the market but then to bring the right solution to the right uh, business problem is the job of the business analyst and that is where we also see a lot of maturity happening. So we are now looking at um, a structured way of looking uh, of co converting our requirements into value cases. So earlier we used to call it uh, requirement collection, now we are call calling it more value case driven um, uh, analysis of our all our requirements. So how do we translate those requirements? How do we manage enough performance or are there enough performance management tools that are available for us? And um, how can we then create a business process that is quite agile in the overall process? So that agility, how do we bring it as part of the uh, processes? So this is what is the a journey for a business analyst. So as we uh, mature, we are looking at a, a more a standard process models, agility in terms of modifying the process models and creating value cases where we could use the technology to the right uh, business problem. So those are, this is what I feel like is the um, driver for today as to why we think the business analyst today can derive a lot more value for the organization than uh, what we as requirement analysts maybe early in my career as requirement analysts as solution consultants did in the uh, did, did within the uh, our customers landscape with that i'll go to slide number 2 like i said there is um, a, a lot of solutions that are available in the technology landscape. But then Accenture uh, brought it into what we see as um, year on year technology evolution. So every year we publish a, um, a, a study which is called um, Tech Vision and it is by year, so 2013 and 2014, where we go to our customers to talk about how we see technology changing and how the techno this technology, this change in the technology would be useful for some of our customers to uh, harness and take it to the next level. But then this harness is more about how do we identify the right solution to the right problem. So if you see the inner circle is more about the technologies within the, which is uh, in 2013 when we when we came out, we said beyond the cloud, it is about relationships uh, at scale, it is about data velocity, so the ability to generate a lot of uh, analytics based on 
uh, information at scale are some of the key technology trends that we saw. And this year we said, okay, but how does this technology trend directly um, uh, impact our businesses? And some of that is what we are talking about in the areas in 2014, which is the digital physical blur, where we see uh, solutions like Google Glass and um, augmentation or um, of the information on real in real time is enabling a lot of value cases, a lot of value cases that would allow for a higher level of safety a higher level of productivity within the customers and thereby uh, meeting their end goals within the uh, within their own organizations and deriving more and more value so that is uh, what i would like to cover as part of um, the digital physical blur what i would say is i won't drain these two slides because uh, at the end of the day these are this is information that you can download from accenture.com um, on the tech vision and it is uh, publicly available these are some of the pieces of information that you could uh, look at but um, what I would like to emphasize is as we look at these um, digital technologies what is the uh, what is the contribution or how can we derive value how can we as business analysts provide more value to the client so that is where um, I think if you look at the software as a service model, we are talking about pre-configured solutions to uh, deliver certain results for say in a customer relationship management scenarios, in, um, uh, in social or in, in, in the engagement, customer engagement management scenarios and things like that. And at the same time, we can also harness the same power of the software as a service to do a more number crunching to understand how I can derive value for investments that I have already put in place within the uh, current infrastructure. So these are two elements that would help me uh, derive this and the critical component to this is the maturity of the business analyst. While I say business analyst uh, 10 times now, what I mean by business analyst? Um, is is somebody who understands the business problems, understands the industry context, but also has a fair knowledge of the technology solutions that are available in place and has the discipline to convert these business problems um, into value cases by applying the right technology. So that is, to me, the key attributes of a good business analyst. Um, and that is what I have described as part of the next set, which is um, in slide uh, dig evolution of the digital enterprise. So when we say about, uh, when we talk about the uh, uh, digital enterprise, we are talking about an enterprise that is fully enabled with technologies like cloud, technologies like analytics, big data, mobile, uh, collaboration, and all of these empowered on an infrastructure platform that contains a um, lot of embedded devices and smart devices that can, uh, that can provide a lot of the input. So the, if we uh, then say that, okay, we have all these, uh, different technologies that are available. How can we then innovate in terms of what services that are provided is what the business analyst will uh, bring together. And um, these business analysts should look at uh, new, new and refined business processes, new and refined service models where commoditization and uh, specific enhancements uh, to the overall um, financial delivery of this uh, so service is uh, provided. And then uh, why we look at um, changing the business model for newer growth patterns and converting some of the app or CapEx into OpEx and as we do that, 
how do we uh, derive the uh, financial benefits we are also looking at optimizing the operational processes uh, there is already an infrastructure there is a lot of asset that is put in place um, there is an uh, investment that is already made by each of our customers and by the organization to derive uh, to uh, to be in place in each of these areas so how can we optimize these operational processes by way of uh, um, by way of these digital technologies so um, if you talk about um, a business process how can i cut down three steps within the business process because today i know where the customer is because of the mobile transaction um, i know what his interests are looking at some of the analytics from his past information and i can uh, provide a very specific information based on uh, his uh, based on his behavior as well as his current location is what we are trying to do as a two step reduction in the new ser in the new service model so that is an example of how you derive a new service model by providing very contextual customized services that are relevant for uh, some of this a very good classic example is google, google now i don't know how many you have, of you have experienced it but it can bring your both your work life as well as your personal life into a very uh, easy transitionable model um, just by using phone as the uh, mechanism but then if we apply the same thing to a uh, travel management within uh, within the organizations and we apply the same principles we can now know a better um, uh, we can now know where the individual is located because we can track him the, because of the smart devices the uh, some of the information like the ambient temperature the ambient pressure um, ambient gas quality can all be transmitted and therefore we now have a better model in terms of ensuring the safety of our um, uh, safety of our personnel is the same set of technologies that could be applied to create a business model and to um, improve the efficiencies and engagement of my own business so those are that is what um, are the key business drivers or the key key elements and now can you empower as the business analyst you can then look at uh, if i go to the uh, evolution of technology and business slide we are now talking about a very agile method so earlier it used to be the business giving some requirements the it then converting it into testable requirements and then uh, providing it back to the business and saying is this what you want and if they say yes uh, it, the it team then develops it but then um, now we see a lot more uh, integration so the business now understands a lot more of the it technologies the it teams should then understand a lot more of the business so that they can more in a very agile form can take this um, innovation to the next level so fundamentally what we are trying to um, what what we are experiencing as we go by in with all the implementation of any of the digital technologies is um a very uh, a very strong connect between the business and the technology and a lot of new uh, models that are evolving as a result of this strong connect between the business and the technology and uh, once again at the end of the day as we invest the business needs only one and one thing which is i want a better margin uh, meaning i should invest uh, i should have a lower cost i should be able to have a higher revenue and therefore a higher profit in the overall process and towards that anything that you can do in terms of innovation and in reduction reducing the cost or in improving the margin or improving the results uh, revenues would be what we deliver to the client whether it is an oil and gas client which i work with if i can get the same uh, oil uh, or uh, more oil for the same cost with the same well 
uh, with the wave, same well count, then I am deriving, providing value to my uh, business and therefore to my stakeholders and which is primarily the shareholders of the organization. So that to me is, is the value creation in the whole process. Um, and uh, so uh, while I say that, I, I think I've already transitioned into trying to give you an example. The example um, that we have in the how does the business analyst make a difference in an um, in a oil and gas scenario is where um, we are talking about uh, uh, two simple scenarios. I just wanted that cartoon to explain why step one would fail and why uh, the second one would be successful. Is you have. Um, a half duplex and a full duplex model if you if I may compare it with a um, um, uh, with a, a telecom situation where there is a developer who knows a lot of code who understands how to di drive a lot of uh, technology elements and there is business who is uh, who's very very interested in um, safety in forecasting in in things that are very relevant for them and uh, in a lot of situations there are there is a lot of uh, information that is lost in translation but if there is one person that both of these teams could go to who understands how to bridge these two individuals that is what the role of a business analyst is and um, that, that's where we, we were very successful, I should say. So coming back to the business case, um, there were one of our large oil companies um, in, in a reasonably new region, which is in the Asia Pacific, uh, they came to us, they said, we have a very ambitious plan of uh, drilling up to 7,000 wells. But then we want to, at every step of the way, we want to analyze the economic viability of a particular well and derive, uh, make sure that it is, um, it is in line with the margin expectations from our uh, shareholders. So it is no more about uh, can I produce more oil, it is about producing profitable barrels of oil. And then um, what we have uh, suggested is a macroeconomic modeling solution, which is a software, which is available uh, software as a service. So the implementation was a pretty straightforward implementation. But then um, the problem was, what are the key focus areas? What should my client perform? So we needed a we needed business analysts who could understand what are the key production drivers, what are the key uh, development drivers, which is uh, how does the rigs work, how does the performance of the oil wells work and things like that. So this is what, where my team came, in, uh, came into being. We've done two things. One is we have uh, understood the tool in the first place, which is the macroeconomic modeling tool and all the input drivers that uh, uh, that form the lever for uh, deriving economic value. But then we then started to take, okay, if this is the what the tool drives, can I now look at the business to um, get the right inputs and start providing a instant value? So um, we then, uh, a team of business analysts, uh, who were uh, petroleum engineers, uh, part petroleum engineers, part petroleum management uh, business graduates, and a set of um, technology consultants were all pulled together. We, call, uh, we have trained them on a set of business analyst rules, uh, business analyst courses, which would allow them to understand how do you scope, how do you create um, uh, requirements, how do you then um, monitor the benefits and things like that. Some of the basic stuff that the business analyst should do and um, placed it on this particular client. So every 
time when we have configured this tool for a new field, for a new region, we have uh, ensured that the value is clearly understood, documented and also discussed among the uh, clientele so that the adoption of this individual tool is also uh, possible. So um, in the process what our uh, team could drive is up to 28 million stuff which is almost a million a day in terms of dollar values, uh, dollar uh, numbers for um, of advanced, uh, of enhanced production from the same well count for this particular customer. It may not, if you look at the larger picture of how much is the uh, overall um, production for this particular customer to the uh, uh, 26 million stuff, it might look very small. But if you look at the uh, cost of implementing this solution and the team, it is very, very negligible. So um, within the first uh, three months, the um, the team has demonstrated that 10 times the value of their own involvement in this um, overall initiative is realized by this particular organization which is uh, which to me is the greatest and the combination of the right skills and the right maturity level is what I believe has enabled this whole process. So with that um, I, I hope I've uh, I have explained what the key aspects of the business analyst and the uh, in the new world which is in the digital world the business analysts now need to clearly understand the, the business uh, value, uh, business uh, performance what are the key value drivers for that particular business how can the technology solutions provide that particular value and with the discipline ensure that that value is understood and articulated as part of the uh, larger organizations. These are some of the things that uh, as business analysts we, sh uh, we can derive value for our clients. Um, uh, I would at this point in time um, uh, move over to ask Chanchal to lead the conversation from a media and uh, uh, technology perspective. Thank you so much. That was very insightful. Um, and, and thanks for explaining the role of the business analyst. So um, good afternoon everyone. I am going to cover uh, the role of a business analyst from a communications media and high tech industry perspective. Um, communication industry is something which is very close to all of us, especially it is one industry which touches everyone every day. We all use different channels of communication, whether it's online, mobile, landline, broadband, whatever. But this is one industry which has also gone through a lot of change and something which is, you know, ever, it, it's something which is evolving every day and the new things coming up. And as Subhu mentioned, the, uh, the whole influx of digital into it has, has, has changed the game completely. So what is happening today from a comms industry perspective? Today if you look at, there are seven mega trends which surround the comms industry. Um, legacy revenue decline is essentially uh, the revenue decline of traditional voice market. If you see more and more data is taking up a um, lot of uh, you, you know uh, revenues for a mobile company or for any comms company. Um, most of the time today we use WhatsApp or Facebook or other modes of communication which is non-traditional. So use data on your mobile phone which is real time to communicate and actually calling someone. Right? And that's how you see a lot of acquisitions um, around the whole online media or mobile internet um, world. Um, today the people are investing more in broadband network, ne networks and next generation service platforms. Uh, broadband over a period of time has seen a lot of evolution. Today it's not about just getting internet bandwidth at your home. Uh, we use internet bandwidth today to play games, to watch movies, uh, to stream music, stuff like that. It is something which has become a part of your lifestyle today and not just a utility. If you look at the hyper growth markets today, you know there's a lot of emerging market, emerging trend in terms of uh, in terms of growth markets. There's a lot of things happening around convergence, which is essentially uh, having mobile, landline, broadband, TV, all into one single one single communication channel. New innovative innovative services. 
as in like smart communications, you know, connected services, it is something which is it, which is taking up a lot of um, a lot of place in the market today. You see uh, education, uh, connected education. You see connect, connected uh, hospital services. These are all something which are dependent on communication as an industry. Today, a single communication player who used to have just landline or mobile services have evolved much more into an integrated communications player. Government is taking a lot of interest into it. If you see a lot of those um, plans around rural development, uh, focuses a lot on communications, enabling communications, telecommunications, or uh, you know, setting up of high-tech uh, universities at rural uh, areas are something which is taking up a lot of shape. So that's how the communication industry is, is changing. And on top of it, you will also see a lot of consolidation and globalization of different comms companies. Right? You know, Netflix, Comcast. We look at other providers. Uh, you know, traditional. Uh, retailers turning into communications player today. Right? These are the people who are investing a lot and have understood the the importance of communication, the importance of media today. Um, that's that's a big space of consolidation and globalization. It's a rapidly shifting space today uh, between service providers globally. Now, what is happening from a media and technology perspective? When I talk about the entertainment, media, and technology business, uh, you know they have changed rapidly over the last few years. With the with the evaluation of online gaming, online media, streaming, all that stuff coming in, the the service providers have become more agile, and they are in the constant, uh, you know, they are they are constantly trying to figure out customer insights. You know, they they are trying to get digital to the core of your house, right? So you see a lot of a lot of companies who have connected consumers, you know, which and they are driving innovation and their agility in order to understand and meet their needs. You see, multi-platform analytics drive advertisers today. So, how much of advertisement you are viewing? You you, you see people, uh, you see companies doing advertisements on YouTube these days, which was nothing more just channel, just channel, um, video streaming uh, website, right? You see companies advertising their products and their services on YouTube. It's because you're always connected to the internet. You know, that's something which is easily reachable. And to stay relevant in this market, the content creators are trying to innovate both in their terms of products and how you deliver to them. So it, your traditional channel of broadcasting has replaced has been replaced by a digital channel these days. Right? You see content being streamed over not over to your PC but over to your TVs, over to your uh, laptops, over to your um, uh, all your mobile devices. Right? Um, content management, and digital distribution at this point of time is is is, is a top priority um, for a lot of these media companies. You know, delivering the right content at the right time on the right platform is something which is changing the world really. Look at the recent Lok Sabha elections, the way digital media was used uh, for the Lok Sabha polls, um, for you know, for, for for all the for all the parties for their marketing campaigns, and and the way media used digital platform to deliver the news. Right? So why is this changing? The customers are increasingly looking for value-added solutions today. It's it's they're looking for convergence. There are a lot of cloud-based models uh, which the consumers are looking for and the service providers providing. Nobody wants to get dependent on downloading a software anymore. They want things on the go quick. Social media and mobile innovations are catching up really well these days, right? It's a big thing. Um, things like big data, you know, the, the social engineering which happens all the time, and open source marketplace which, which has created a whole lot of opportunity for, for communication players, for service providers, for software people, and for consumers as well. Now, on this, while the landscape is changing, what is the role of a BA? Which how is the role of a BA has changed over a period of time? Now, we have a different view, uh, uh, and we have seen the role of a BA changing over a period of time. The old view of a business analyst was essentially something which was requirement specific. If you have a requirement, get a BA quickly on the call, ask him to deliver a solution. It was a very knee jerk kind of an approach that we take. Just typically, people from IT background, uh, who's, who was a part-time developer, or a test manager, or a program manager, and it was very tactical at nature. Now, what has happened over a period of time in our industry um, is we have seen that the business analysts are now taken as problem solvers. They are people who are more strategic in nature. They play a long-term role. They play a very, very uh, important role in the life cycle of the project. Uh, it's also become a leverage point for experienced professionals. At least in our industry, we have seen a lot of people 
coming from various backgrounds and various backgrounds and are coming up and joining the IT industry because they bring a lot of industry and functional knowledge. It is also uh, and and, and um, you know important point of time because business analysts are something which is which are very critical to projects these days because people have understood the importance of rework people have understood the importance of how IT can make or break a, a business proposition. Right now, if you look at uh, the evolution that we have seen in our group, essentially we have all the business analysts. Also, it used to come from a very technical skill set. They would have Java, Oracle, SAP, uh, and different technology uh, mindset. And what we are trying to do today is create more functional expertise in them. So, business analyst shift is from technical to being more functional, more business oriented. And we see at least these four areas, these four towers of uh, you know functional importance today. So, CRM and billing, which is very critical in uh, extremely critical in in the communications world today, supply chain management across any industry is extremely important. Business intelligence and analytics is, is an extremely important uh, criteria today. Finance and operations have become you know, an, another part of the business uh, analyst life cycle. They are trying, continuously trying to evolve into this area as well. Okay. Now, how do you actually make a business a strong business analyst? Right? Uh, a lot of people come to us say that, you know, we have spent a substantial amount of time in in the industry or in technology landscape. How do we actually become a business analyst? So, what does it take to become a business analyst? Number one, excellent communication skills. Because you're going to face clients, you're going to face peers, you're going to face um, you know people from various backgrounds, and the way you articulate, the way you take requirements is extremely important. Um, contextual modeling, curiosity. You know, how do you actually ask questions? You should be um, inquisitive by nature should be able to communicate risk, your change management, getting to why, visualization, extremely important skill set because as a BA you would have to draw storyboards, do use cases, set cases, stuff like that, right? And most important factor is we look for people who have a business and technology orientation uh, in terms of the mindset. That means it's just not solving an IT problem, it's more about solving a business problem from the top. So when you are a business analyst, the primary requirement is to understand the business or functional aspect of the client that you're working for. Now, now there's a whole thing about Agile which has come up in the market, uh, and you know there's a lot of transition that we have seen from a waterfall model to Agile. As we see that more and more companies are are uh, you know are releasing their products faster, the go-to market time is is become smaller now. It is imperative for the IT to work. From a more waterfall to Najai methodology, right? So earlier, it, where it was more focused on cost and schedule and less on features, with the amount of competition our clients face with their peers or their competitors in the market, it has it, the features have become more important. Uh, it's more value and vision driven than cost and schedule. Um, and some of the primary implications of the move is delivering the production more frequent. So go-to market has become uh, has, has taken the primary objective now. Less document documentation and regular communication meetings. You know, there, is, there are scrums and sprints which happen. Communication has become a critical aspect of the way you deliver your IT projects today. More varieties of work. People get to do a lot of different roles within an agile project. There's more teamwork uh, happening when you deliver projects together. So what does it mean? It essentially means shoot first and aim later. So you are trying to deliver a project or a product on time. At the same time, taking into consideration your testing, your design, everything runs parallel. Right? Uh, in all your projects, in your experience, you would have seen how the waterfall has, how the waterfall model has given space to Agile. Everything is Agile. Most of the projects that we do, Agile is, is the way of delivery today. Right? Now, let me come to the point as how how are our BAs really helping in designing pre configured solutions? We, I spoke about faster go to market. Right. So, how do we, as BAs, how do we enable that? Right. Um, there are there are aspects on it which essentially help a BA to work on pre-configured solutions and deliver the products and services faster. Right. Number one, which we feel extremely important for BAs, are the relevant industry experience. Right. They should have an end-to-end -end vision of how a current industry works. Be abreast of the future trends, the current trends, and that should help you 
create an end-to-end -end industry knowledge base. The other is requirement analysis with blueprinting. So while you're delivering your BA work, you should be able to create templates um, to reduce uh, you know, a lot of rework, process flows, business functional technical documents related to development. These are templates and tools and assets that you keep on building when you're delivering your work. Prototyping has become extremely important today because the business wants to understand the initial blueprint of the solution. And it is something that the business wants to see. They, they don't have the time to wait till the end of the cycle to see how the product will look like. So proof of concept is something which has become very critical today. Pre-configured template provisioning is made for customization, right? So customized, uh, you know, customized add-on onto your solutions depends on your organizational need or enterprise analysis. There are demands that the product will change over a period of time, and the BA would should be should be able to uh, adapt faster to all those needs. A more important is the most one of the most important part is data migration and implementation. So how to ensure that you merge legacy data to ensure continuity on the new solution? So create a business framework, maintain the continuity of the business framework, there is no drop in SLAs, there is no service level change. Um, how do you ensure that the process is flawless? Why as business analysts we kill new uh, old processes and build new processes, it becomes Im important for us to kind of prevent all that data loss. Right? So BAs today are designing a lot of pre-configured pre pre solutions and that is something which helps uh, deliver products faster and helps the enterprise in a very long scale. While you're doing, while you're delivering your BA job, you're, you're, um, you're working with clients, we have had examples where our BAs have also spent a lot of time and have also contributed in innovative play practices uh, within a client. Um, it could be as simple as creating a project management tool for that client for you know automatic population of employee manovers. It's, it's something to effectively manage the time and expense on the project. Um, you know, device in Blue Ocean offering for several clients who seek to offer new product services. So, as I said, it's just not the ITBA who plays an important role. Today, there are business PAs who work with the business stakeholders, the, the strategy team, and actually give a lot of input in devising new products and solutions, and in fact, create new markets for our clients. Develop new smart tools about requirements gathering. You know, get their hands on or different tools or, or different um, assets around requirements gathering uh, and performing market research for clients. We also have worked with a leading online gaming company uh, to devise a social media platform with them. So, social media listening, understanding of social media, how their how their customer experience is changing, all that stuff we have developed enough for clients. Uh, and, 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 and it's on a new platform where not only you can listen to what the customers or the client are talking about, but how does the client can actually use that platform to improve their customer experience. Uh, also worked with a leading sports channel uh, as part of a digital marketing strategy, conducted various uh, market research. Now if you look at all of these examples, there are different people who do it in different organizations and different levels. But from a BA perspective, all of this has become important from him or her is because the business or the IT expects the business analyst to also contribute from an innovation perspective. Now, coming to the point of value creation, so what's the value that we create uh, as business analysts in a project or for or, or for our businesses or our clients? Right. So if you look at the ROI formula for any uh, business an analyst, a simple ROI formula, what you do is essentially reduce reduce the entire cost, reduce the rework, churn, create cost effective solution and increase the benefit, right? How do you increase your ROI? So either you benefit, you increase or reduce the total cost, right? So it's value achieved through solution minus the cost of the solution. So how do you reduce the cost of the solution? You can do a lot of, I check out in the earlier slide, um, templates, tools, assets, uh, you know, iterative model of talking to business and IT becoming more agile. These are, the, these are the ways where you can control cost. Um, increase benefits, be more strategic in the project. Uh, discover new needs. Uh, you can understand requirements much better uh, from a business and functional perspective and not focus only on the IT delivery side of it. Effective change management. You know, communicating risk effectively. Right? These are areas, before it goes to testing, you can understand from a BA perspective that 
you know whether the project uh, or whether a particular feature will work or not work. So you know communicating your risk earlier in the cycle is something which is considered as, as a um, as an added benefit. Right. So, so key areas are new business needs or requirements that are discovered. Um, you prioritize on on the features on the functions that can be delivered first, and that creates more value. Um, more effective implementation of new solutions by the business. So the business might give you 15 new features on functionality to be delivered. You as a business analyst would actually would sit through that whole process of a joint requirement discussion with the client to ensure which solutions or which products bring more value faster to the market. And in the and in the whole process, provide a framework in which an IT team can scale. The IT team, the development team, the testing team looks at you for your inputs because you're the person who's going to communicate between the business and the IT. So that's how our BAs are getting a lot of value here today. So some of the future trends from a BA world. Now, business analysts are not um, are, are not new breed of people. They have been existent, but as I covered earlier, the scope has changed drastically from an industry perspective, from a functional perspective, from a technology perspective. So the whole thing about agile coming into picture, you know, um, use cases has taken a lot of resurgence, uh, especially on agile projects. Business analysts today are not only focused only on planning, analysis, effort estimation, uh, but they're also focusing a lot on design. They bring a lot of value from their functional expertise and they're actually people who contribute a lot on the design aspect of it. Shift in technology trends like cloud are something that has changed the way PAs deliver their work. Right? So cloud computing will continue to have an allure of the promise. It is something which the clients are using to reduce the investment in infrastructure and operations. Today, any any IT project you take, infrastructure is the biggest cost, and you know there are innovative solutions around clouds. A software as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service. More and more IT companies, businesses are adopting that. So how do BAs actually adopt that change and be more productive? Greater connectivity. You see, projects are geographically dispersed today. You would have design team somewhere, testing team somewhere, the onshore BA somewhere, the offshore BA somewhere, and they play an extremely crucial role in becoming that in, in connecting that link between these geographies. So, uh, again, the whole point of communication skills, ability to ability to uh, foster change or adapt is something which is which is very important to a BA uh, when it comes to uh, delivering global projects. Communication first, I covered a lot of it. Uh, these are the people who are the first uh, receiver of requirements or understanding from business than anyone else. The project manager and the business analyst are someone who goes hand in hand today and these are the people who understand the business requirement first. So they are the first one to hear what the business really wants. And as we have seen requirements getting evolved in our processes and our projects, um, you know, as, as the business model has changed, it is, it is extremely important that the business analysts and the project managers and other team members along with the, uh, with the stakeholders of business and the client effectively manage the requirement. It is just not about writing requirements today, it is about managing the requirements very effectively today. Right? So on this, this is what I have from a communications media and uh, high tech industry. Our world has been changing, uh, there is a tectonic shift in terms of the industry functional and uh, technology delivery and hence we see a paradigm shift in terms of uh, BS skill set and the new breed of business analysts who have evolved. So thank you so much for listening to me. Thanks Chanchal. Uh, I think we'll open the floor for questions. Sure. Okay. So as per the first question, and um, Subhu so is going to take this, so how do you get attention of a client? Ha, very easy. If you tell them uh, you are going to provide um, value, you are going to get the attention of client. So a lot of times the numbers uh, would allow you to get the attention of the client. So things like you have a Mm, well stock of 700, your current production is um, 300 million scarf, you can produce 320 million scarf uh, per day is, is the uh, whole element and you can, if, we, if you can quantify 
the uh, effort and capital that is involved in terms of deriving that value is when you can get the attention. So it is primarily, in, in my view, it is in terms of quantifying the value where possible and also um, clearly uh, describing that value. And that is what the business analyst uh, should be able to do. Right. And uh, our next question was, what is the next level for a BA? But I think uh, you kind of uh, answered that as well, uh, Subhu Bhiti Pray, the first question. Uh, <clears throat> so the next question is, is it necessary for a BA to have a hardcore or normal for that matter technical background? Um, good question. No, I don't expect them to be the developers. But I do expect that a lot of times they should understand what the technology can deliver for them. So uh, it is very important for them to understand uh, what, is the, uh, what is the value that the technology can provide. But they don't have to be hardcore technologists. Right. Yeah, I think any any amount of technology background is always preferable, but it, it's not necessarily yes. a hardcore technology delivery yes. because clients today look at business analysts from a more functional perspective. Thank you. Um, next question is, what are the basic roles for business analysts and qualification for uh, pressures? When I say qualification for pressures, I think um, you should be extremely good at whatever your um, line of um, academics is. If you are a good, um, say, user experience person, then you should understand the functions of user experience very well. If you are a production engineer, um, if you are a graduate from uh, a telecoms, you should understand your core uh, sciences or core academics very well. And then you should have the aptitude uh, to articulate business, understand and articulate business problems very well. So your ability to communicate will be a very important aspect. Um, if you look at what um, um, the trends that um, we, you just saw in the slides that Chanchal presented, communication first is a trend. So the better you can communicate is the better you can um, become a uh, good business analyst. Right. So that, those so, are uh, some of the key attributes. Go on, Accenture. So, yeah, so the next question is an interesting one that how is Accenture gearing up its business analyst community to be part of this digital change in terms of upskilling them or providing them the right opportunities? Yeah, um, I think it is, um, yeah, I would say once again, a two, three-pronged approach. One is um, enabling them. So um, uh, while we identifying the right talent from the uh, market, uh, from colleges, bringing them on board um, is, is a basic, that's a given. But then um, enabling them with the right uh, technology input as well as the right um, business analyst discipline by way of business analysts certifications by way of training and coaching them is the first aspect that we do as part of the core enablement process. Then as they uh, tend to prove themselves in, uh, in the uh, core area, so functional uh, of and demonstrating their understanding of the functional problems and the business problems, we then place them in situations where they can start playing the role of the bridge between the business and the uh, technology communities. And that is where we give them a lot of opportunities to interact with the business, uh, to articulate solutions to the business. So uh, it is a journey that they uh, go through uh, in terms of their maturity. And uh, I think you have correctly identified, I think both from an enablement perspective, there is a clear program, a clear set of initiatives, and also um, there is a clear direction in terms of how we create these opportunities. And a lot of times, we just are supplying because the opportunities are created 
are already there out there in the market. So a lot of our customers already realize the value of a business analyst. Sure. So to all the new BAs, I mean there is a, you know, stay tuned for a BA skill test which is coming up soon on uh, TechGay and um, you know that I, you should personally look for for that uh, skill test. So stay tuned for that. Um, another question uh, from Anandra Patwari is essentially what is the value addition of business analysts over uh, SMEs? Uh, SMEs are subject matter experts in a specific field. So they will, uh, they will look to solve a particular problem within, within a technology or within an industry solution. Business analysts are more of the uh, generalists who will connect the um, business problems to the value case or to derive the value cases. So uh, to me, um, uh, an SME can uh, become a business analyst by uh, by way of two things. One is create uh, having the discipline of uh, the business analyst business analyst business analysis. So you should understand what are the roles and the specific expectations from a business analyst. And two by uh, also looking at the um, value metrics for a solution is where when a SME becomes a business analyst. And the other way around can also happen. A business analyst who uh, delves deep into a particular area, both functionally and technically, can become a subject matter expert. But although those cases should be rare. Right, correct. Um, the other question was, uh, if you add business analysts on traditional delivery model, um, they not create an additional layer and hamper communication between core delivery team and business team, thus beating the objective of agile delivery model. So let me take that up. In fact, yeah, in yeah, fact, yeah, yeah. The one of the strongest reasons why why business analysts have come up and become so popular in the last few years is because there was actually a gap between business and IT. I mean, they were not really relaying, um, you know, the requirements properly and. We have statistics which say that 80% of rework on a project happens because of uh, badly written down requirements. So business analysts are something, uh, roles which are non-negotiable anymore. So you need to have it. And it's not really hampering, but it's not, but it's actually enhancing the way IT projects get delivery, uh, get delivered. And in an agile scenario, it is extremely more important because you have to have that common thread. You will see a lot of our BAs. Uh, you know, graduating into scrum masters uh, in, in, in those parts. So it, it is it is something which I personally believe is non-negotiable in the new way of IT product delivery. And another question from Vivek Agarwal is, uh, Hi, I am in IT for seven years. I have done some projects as a BA. I want to enhance my BA skills. Could you please suggest uh, good courses? So, I mean, uh, I, I can take that up, suppose, so, you know, if you, if you, there are a lot of, lot of courses around uh, business analysis, IIBA is the, uh, this, the governing body and there are a lot of other groups which, which will give you a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, learning and courses around business analysis. Now, business analysis is requirements engineering, requirements management, functional analysis, you've got to be sure of what you want to do as a BA and take up those relevant courses, but there are a lot of channels available for uh, training. Okay. I'm going to quickly run some uh, other questions. Um, so one question from Ankush Verma said, what does it take for a technical background Java J2E to become an analyst? How can anyone convince on a profile change? Sumo, do you want to take that? Yeah. Um, so transition of a Java J2E developer to a business analyst. Can you get business that? analyst. Yeah, I think as you, then the key strength that you have is the technology. In those kind of cases, for you, you will have to pick a particular industry where uh, then you will have to understand the industry, uh, overall industry business processes, some of the industry trends um, to make yourself relevant for that particular industry. And then you will also have to um, focus on some of the uh, business analyst traits, which is requirement analysis, functional analysis, um, to um, to stay away from uh, or 
to elevate yourself from going too much into uh, technolo technologically solving the problem to articulating a solution um, that would solve a particular business problem. So there is a difference between, um, yeah, I hope um, I, it is clear. All right. Okay. So I'm going to take the last two questions. Uh, this is from Arka Prabhu Chakraborty. It says, do you think BA should be integrated in all phases of SDLC, even in the maintenance level of a project? Uh, let me give my view, then Subodhan, you can uh, take over. Uh, I think today the BA role uh, is, is something which what we say as top of the V model. So they, they play an important role in planning, analysis, design, and UAT, BAT kind of activity. But there are projects where we see that the business analysts do play a critical role. Uh, either either it is either it's deployment or it is build because the business analyst in a system integration type of project, someone who's, who needs to be constantly there um, to enable those changes, have that communication going along with the project manager to the business. And these are large complex projects where the PA plays a lot, lot of role across SDLC. But even in maintenance, uh, you know, if you have, if you have seen sustainable engineering, we have seen um, the role of a BA is, is extremely critical and the, some of the work that are delivering in our large EHT clients, we see a lot of our uh, junior business analysts or mid senior business analysts playing a role in the maintenance as well. You know, it, it could be just, just basis the analysis of the number of tickets coming, the type of incidents coming, so and so forth. So based on the business and based on the requirement, I think a BA can play a role across the phase of SDLC, but maximum amount of uh, time would go in the top of the three um, uh, phase. So, so we are views on that? No, no, absolutely. I think um, as you, even in the uh, application outsourcing engagement, there are specific cases where you could look at how do we um, um, improve the first time resolution um, by applying a business, case, a business analyst up front uh, in solving a particular ticket, how do we rationalize the application portfolio by applying the, uh, so these are some of the things that the business analyst can contribute um, even in application outsourcing. So to me, sure. um, there's a critical, like uh, you said, non-negotiable um, role within all IT projects, both outsourcing as well uh, uh, application outsourcing, maintenance uh, kind of projects, production support kind of projects, as well as um, uh, SI, with systems integration kind of projects. Right. So we pick up the last question uh, from Amit Sah, which says, as there are so many new and existing technologies, what level of depth BAs are supposed to have in them? I think you have uh, uh, explained part of it earlier. Essentially, technology is not really the hindrance. It's not expected to be um, extremely strong in technology per se, but yes, as a BA, you will move from project to project, from client to client, and even in case of industry to industry, it is important for you to understand the changing landscape of technology. You may not need to have hands on it, but it is important that you understand how the technology works, because that's something which is going to change fundamentally uh, the business work. And uh, the last question, uh, Subhu, in today's world, asked by Ben Bose, in today's world, is a product manager's role a natural progression for the business analyst? Yes. The, um, a product manager uh, is a good, uh, good benchmark for uh, a good business analyst, I would say. Um, if you uh, understand your product and if you can derive solutions, then you are already a good business analyst. Right. All right. So with that, um, you know, we thank um, Subhu uh, for your answers and your comments and, and thank everyone for attending this, this session. Thank you, Chanchal. Um, thanks for attending the session. I hope it was an engaging one. Well, thank you so much, Chanchal and uh, Subhu, for answering the questions. I would like the attendees to know that uh, since uh, due to the shortage of time, uh, the answers would probably be answered on the webinar page. Thank you so much for uh, the insightful presentation, Chanchal and Subhu. I would also, also like to thank all our users for 
uh, making this webinar a success. The recording of the session would be available on tegic.com by evening. Thank you all. Have a great day. You have a great day too. Thanks.